night service. Good to see y'all out tonight. And those online joining us. Let's stand and open our service tonight. Lord, we come before you tonight. Thank you, dear God, for an opportunity to be in your house and to lift up praise and honor and glory. Lord, we know there are those that aren't able to be in service tonight, Father, Lord, and we just ask you, Father, Lord, to encourage them, to lift them up, dear God. To, Lord, hopefully they're listening online. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this service, and Lord, and, and the word coming forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. My God is awesome. Praise God. My God is awesome. He can move the mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak and forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. He is awesome. My God is awesome. Savior of the whole. Giver of salvation, by his stripes I'm healed. My God is awesome, today I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living, praise his holy name. My God is awesome, thank you Lord. Oh, awesome, awesome, oh, he is awesome, my God is awesome, oh, he is awesome, he is awesome, he is awesome. Yes, you are, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you tonight, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to lift up hands and praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature, and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man oh you were here before the world began above all kingdoms above all thrones Above all wonders the world has ever known. Above all wealth and treasures of the earth. Oh, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Oh, crucified and laid behind stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that again. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, 
above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, yes you are. Above all wonders the world has ever known. Above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Oh, crucified and laid behind a stone, you live to die, rejected and You took the fall and thought of me above all. Oh, crucified and laid behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone like a rose. took the fall and thought of me above all. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, yes, it breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain, hallelujah, let's sing it again. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. He breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. It breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain. It breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That there is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, that hell trembles. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord that you've given us authority, Father. Hallelujah. To tread on serpents and scorpions, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, over every power of the air, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for power in the name of Jesus. Let's just say the name of Jesus. Give the devil a black eye. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No name a higher. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing, Father. Hallelujah in this house. Hallelujah. We were going to wait and uh, 
do the offering. I think we can put the offering in on our way out, but we, I think we need to go ahead and pray while the Spirit's moving. Bring our needs to the Lord. Thank you, Beverly and Jay. Appreciate you all. Good evening, folks. <laughs> um, I only have one written down need here. I took the list maybe a little too early, but I know of a few others we have. My husband, of course, needs prayer. He's still hurting from pulling or straining something or another. He does have a uh, appointment, but it's not until March. <laughs> So we're just praying and believing he won't have to go to that appointment. But, um, but he, he was a little worse today. He slept kind of funny. Um, so Jesus is able. And uh, our brother Jay over here fell down, got hurt, he got beat up today by the ground. <laughs> Bless his heart. So we need to pray for him. And um, I'll just go ahead. There's just a few of us here. Does anyone else have a, a pressing need that you didn't get to, to write down? We're go uh, yeah, Brother Robert? Okay, pneumonia. Okay. And we're so happy to see Brother William here. We're praying for you that God just keeps strengthening that back. And um, he's your healer. So... Amen. Yes, we have another back issue. Um, yeah, this is the week or the month for backs. <laughs> so, but God can heal our back. And so nothing is too difficult for him. And um, like, what am I hitting back here? I got a little stool. Anyway, um, so we'll pray for Beverly's back and uh, she has some home situations with her house we'll pray for that and we're also glad to see judy and we're going to keep praying for her Amen. she's just come a long way and um we're going to continue praying for her and uh we're making some progress too you know we're we're ready for new children's ministry and if you all want to walk back and look in our uh what's going to be our coffee house area it's coming along so we're excited about that and my husband I don't know if he wanted me to say this or not. Hopefully I won't get in trouble. But anyway, uh, we do have an intern, it looks like, lined up to come this summer. So we praise the Lord for that. It, now, it's not 100% in stone, but, uh, but the Lord's moving. He's, he's doing things. He's answering our prayers. So praise the Lord. And, well, I'm going to stop talking then. I have the gift for Gab, <laughs> so I'll stop talking. But let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your love and goodness to us. Lord, thank you that you are with us. You are our strength. You are our life. You are our source. And Lord, we go through hard times. Lord, we have storms. We have trials. We have aches and pains and pulled muscles and backs and even cancer diagnoses. But Lord, nothing is too hard for you. Lord, you have crushed the serpent's head. And, Lord, you said in your word that, ch that the children's bread is healing. And, Lord, you are the bread of life. You are our bread. You are our source. And part of that is not only eternal life but healing in our bodies. And, Lord, we lift up our sister Kay Bone. She has a special need, a test she's going to be going through. We just pray that this will work out, that you would heal her body. We pray for good report. Lord, we lift up this relative of Robert and Sharon Stephen who has pneumonia, Lord, we just pray you would touch those lungs right now and bring healing and wholeness, that his breathing, even at this moment as we're praying, that he'll just feel like something open up in his chest and he can breathe better. Lord, you just, we just pray that you would reach down in the, in the hospital room he's in or wherever he's at right now and just touch and heal him. Lord, we pray for our brother Jay over here who's hurt, hurt, he hurt his hand and he's still playing piano. He busted his face up. We just pray for total healing and that nothing was wrong uh, with any bones or anything like that in the neck or the head. We just pray total healing over him. 
We lift up our brother William. We thank you that he's here tonight. And Lord, you're moving in his body. You're touching him. We just pray you complete that healing and just uh, help his bones to be strong and just touch and heal him in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our sister Beverly. And Lord, she's just such a hard worker, a servant hearted. And Lord, she's not going to let the devil stop her, but Lord, he is trying. And so, Lord, we know that you have crushed the serpent's head. Lord, greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. So we stand on your word, and I just pray that that house would be fixed and together like it needs to be, that she'd be able to have just everything she needs there, that no more raccoons would break into the house, that you'd get those things out of there. And, Lord, that you would heal her back. Lord, just touch and heal her, bring healing to her back, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up our sister Judy Duff. We're so grateful that you spared her. Lord, you spared her life. You have a purpose and a plan for her. You're not through with her yet. And I thank you that she's here tonight. And I just pray your healing touch would just restore her, restore the uh, damage that was done during the uh, heart episode. And we just pray for total and complete healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for my husband, Lord. We just pray you would touch his back and remove this pain, the source of it, and just uh, let it not come back again. We pray, help him to be able to sleep, and we just ask you for this in Jesus' name. And Lord, myself and others with different chronic ailments, Sandra couldn't come because of her migraines, Lord. We just curse those migraines in the name of Jesus and just pray that you would heal her totally in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that you are our healer. Lord, you've done so much for us already, so we're going to stand on your word and believe. Even if we come a thousand times, we're going to come a thousand more times because we believe and trust in you. So bless this service, everything said and done, we pray, and we thank you for being with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, worship people. (laughs) God bless you all. Those were some good songs. I was saying in my mind, Lord, just break all the chains holding us. And then the very next song, I said that in my mind between songs, and the very next song she said was break every chain. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's cool when that happens. Um, Anyway, uh, no, my husband didn't shrink in pretending to be a girl. (laughs) It's me up here. (laughs) Don't get scared. Um, anyway, I am uh, basically, you know when those pastors go and preach in foreign countries and they have a translator person? Okay, that's me tonight. I'm the translator uh, preacher tonight, and um, so please bear with me. <laughs> um, we talked about how to go about doing this, and he's really hurting a lot, and he took one of those pain meds that makes him kind of groggy, and he had asked me earlier if I thought I could do it. I said, well... I think they all like me enough. They're not going to throw tomatoes or nothing. But anyway, but praise the Lord. When, when there's a will, there's a way. And sometimes we got to, the lemons of life, we got to make lemonade, right? So you all get blessed with me tonight. But um, anyway, praise the Lord. We're going to get blessed by God's word because God's word never fails, no matter who delivers it. So um, I'm going to get a drink real quick. If you all have your water bottles with you, you can join me. But um, we are not going to have the scriptures on the screen. So if you have your Bibles, you might want to turn to Philippians chapter 4. So you can do that real quick. I have the scriptures written down here. Sorry about that. (laughs) Okay. Yes, Brother Robert, did you have some? Okay. Okay. All righty. Okay. So we are in Philippians chapter 4. And can everyone hear me? I feel like I'm yelling. Am I too loud? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, because I'm not used to microphones. So, and I might just sit on the stool a little bit here. So, anyway, so if you can turn to Philippians chapter 4, we're going to get through about half of the chapter. (coughs) Excuse me. So, um, chapter 4. And the first verse is sort of a summary over the apostles' teaching from the previous chapter 3. So I'm going to read verse uh, 4, verse 1. Excuse me. So then, my dearly loved and longed for brothers and sisters, 
my joy and crown, pardon me, in this manner stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. Do you remember what we learned, <coughs> excuse me, uh, last week? How are we to stand firm <clears throat> in the Lord? Sorry, I have allergies going on. <laughs> Forgive me, it just suddenly hit me. Um, how do we stand firm in the Lord? Uh, we forget about the past and keep going forward in Christ, and we live what we've already learned. So a lot of people do get bogged down in the past and things that happened, and God wants us to forget about that and move on. Now, it doesn't mean you totally forget it like you can't even remember it, but you don't let it keep you down anymore. You keep going forward. That's his will for us, for our lives. And then we live what we've learned. You know, we, we don't just talk the talk, but we walk the walk, as they say. Okay, so now in chapter 4, the conclusion of the letter is in the apostles' usual fashion. A barrage of commands and exhortations. Tonight, we will only have time to cover the first half. Yeah, I already said that. And um, I was thinking of this when I read through it. It's kind of mom-like. You know your mom when you're a kid running out the door? Now, remember to do this and then this. Oh, yeah, and this and this. You know, Apostle Paul is kind of being mom-like uh, at the end of it. Often at the end of his letters, he'll do that. He'll, he'll have a bunch of commands and name people uh, by their names, like, just different things that, you know, he worked, he was a regular person working with regular people. So I, I like to think that the Apostle Paul was sort of had some mom qualities. And um, anyway, so let's go on to verse two. And here he is talking about two people by name. And I have some Greek words I have to say, so bear with me if I don't say them right. I don't think we have any Greek scholars, so I'll try. Um, <laughs> I urge you, Odia, and I urge Sin Tyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I also ask you, true partner, to help these women who have contended for the gospel at my side, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. And I see a little thing that says, let's pray. I forgot to pray over the word, so let's pray real quick. Lord, we prayed for the needs of the body of Christ here. And Lord, we also want to pray over your word. Lord, your word is powerful. It's our food. It's our drink. It's our life. And, and your presence is here already with us. And so, Lord, speak to us through your word. Help me to, I'm just being a translator tonight, help me to translate well and just open our hearts to receive. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So um, here are two ladies in the church who love God. Their names are written in the book of life, and they were a great help to the Apostle Paul and in his ministry. So we don't know what they did. They could have washed dishes. They could have washed his clothes. They could have done all kinds of things. They could have been teachers of the ladies or children or what. We don't know what they did, but they were important. They were important. And, um, but they just couldn't get along, okay? Obviously, it had not turned into some big sin issue. Um, you know, it says their names are written in the book of life, okay? But most likely, it was an issue between two strong-willed women who liked to take charge and do what they thought was best. And no, nobody knows anybody like that, right? <laughs> so, um, the issue was is that they had different ideas as to what they, you know, would work best, and they would butt heads. Um, I remember uh, the first pastor that my husband was a uh, staff pastor under, or was it the second? Anyway, Brother Larry Griswold, he used to talk about the Lord brings brother and sister sandpaper into our life a lot of time, <laughs> and uh, he has a purpose for that. Sometimes they're just people, just rubs us the wrong way. It doesn't mean they're bad and we're good or we're bad and they're good. It just you just kind of clash, you know, that happens sometimes, even among Christians, and um, that was happening all the way back in the New Testament church, so they're every bit as human as we are. Um, 
So the Apostle Paul is appealing to the church even to help these women get along. So it must have been a substantial, you know, enough thing going on, maybe over a little time where it was getting a lot of tension. And it's like, okay, ladies, we got to get our act together here and church help them, you know. But they weren't sinning. They weren't, you know, getting their name out of the book of life. They just needed to learn to get along. Um, every personality type in the family of God and every personality type is needed. Okay, so there's quiet and reserved people. There's outgoing, gregarious, you know, take charge people. We got, and everything in between. The body of Christ, we are human beings. We're not all cookie cutter the same, but we are all needed and we're all important. And um, this is where honoring one another above ourselves comes in. We need to be sensitive to others. So the bulldozer, get her done type personalities don't roll over the quieter spirited people. And we do need both because sometimes the quieter spirited people, it, 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 nothing would ever get done because they, oh no, well you do, no, you do. And so we need those take charge types but as long as they don't just run over everybody, okay? So we need a balance, we need a balance, and God will help us to learn how to deal with different personality types. He will help us to do that. Um, okay, he says, this is, this is from Pastor Brett's memory now. Um, I remember watching a documentary about General Omar Nelson Bradley. I'm sure you military folks have heard of him. I've even heard of him, I know who he is. Um, Originally, he was uh, discounted by President Roosevelt during World War II because he was a quiet thinker personality type. However, General Patton knew him and he insisted to the president that Bradley was the right guy to have on the team. Bradley ended up commanding the Second Corps in the Tunisia campaign and the Allied invasion of Sicily. He commanded the first United States Army during the invasion of Normandy. After the breakout from Normandy, he took command of the 12th United States Army Group, which ultimately comprised 43 divisions and 1.3 million men, the largest body of American soldiers that had ever been assembled to serve in a single field of battle under you know, a single commander. General Bradley became one of the few five-star generals, and he made a huge contribution, not only to the war, but in things afterwards. If this great man had been overlooked because of his personality type, World War II might have turned out very differently, and, and that's the truth. Okay, so don't think you can't be important in God's kingdom because of your personality type. It doesn't matter. God uses everybody. Okay, in verse 4, here's a good one. I think there's a song with this in it. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So it's two times. Rejoice, rejoice. Here again, we are reminded not rejoicing in our circumstances. It doesn't say rejoice when things are going well. Rejoice when... You have no problems. No, it says rejoice in the Lord. Yes, rejoice always in who he is and what he has done for us, regardless of what we're going through. Just the fact that we have our name written in heaven, that's something, that, that's the most amazing thing to rejoice over. I mean, think about that. You know, uh, all of us are over 50 here tonight. <laughs> I'm looking out there, including myself. Um, you know, life is short, and we have heaven. We have heaven waiting for us because of Jesus and what he did. So we have reason to rejoice, joy, rejoice <laughs> even when things are hard. You know, we have reason to rejoice. Praise the Lord. Okay, verse 5, let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Okay, graciousness, the definition is, the willingness to yield one's personal rights and to show consideration and gentleness to others. 
So sometimes you're gracious to someone when you don't feel like it. You know, you'll, you'll give them, there's the last piece of pie in the buffet at church or something, and you really wanted it, but you'll give it to the other person or just all kinds of ways that we're gracious to each other that, that no one really knows. No one knows sometimes the sacrifices, uh, both small and large, that we are showing graciousness to others uh, and, and consideration of them and their needs. Um, he wants us to be gracious. And it says, the Lord is near. Okay, that doesn't just mean near to us, you know, his presence, he's with us, okay. But it really, what it's talking about here, it's a reminder, reminder that at his arrival, when we are uh, in heaven with him, that he will settle all the differences as our, as our judge, and he will bring the consummation that will make most of our human differences seem trifling. You know, he is near to us. So, you know, we need, we need to, to have that perspective. And, and sometimes, you know, don't let ourselves get bogged down on being upset over things that ultimately aren't going to really matter, you know. And that's easier said than done, but he will help us to do that. Okay, verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Okay, he has this in bold letters here. Don't worry about anything. Okay, who, who worried about that storm they were predicting yesterday? <laughs> Beverly did. I didn't worry about it. I was more annoyed about it because I thought, oh, it's going to keep me up. <laughs> and our sleep's been so bad lately. And it ended up really not being that much of nothing. You know, it wasn't too bad. Got a little windy, but it wasn't that bad. Um, there's a lot to worry about. But the Bible tells us don't worry about anything. But in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And I like how it says, okay, anything and everything, th those are kind of very similar words. But I think of anything as being worry about irrational things sometimes. We worry about things that like aren't actually happening to us. Like there's people in this world, believe it or not, who worry about aliens coming to abduct them in the middle of the night. I mean, you, you could worry about anything if you are a worrier. Um, and God doesn't want us to worry about anything. It says, but in everything, and I think that everything are the things that are actually happening to you. You know, my husband with the pulled back muscle, or things, you know, your finances aren't meeting your, your bills aren't meeting what you bring in, you know, and that's an everything, that's not an anything. But he says, but in everything we're going through, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we always need to rejoice, present your request to God. In verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So the don't, don't worry part, this is not a keep a stiff upper lip statement, but it is an encouragement and instruction on how we can navigate life without getting bogged down and fretting and worrying. And God doesn't want us to be stressed and to worry all the time. You know, stress does so much damage to our health. Um, high blood pressure, just tense muscles, um, it just can affect some inflammation in your body, I think, even stress can, can our reaction to stress, rather. And um, it's, not, it's not easy, but God will help us. He will help us not to be chronic warriors. Um, God doesn't, okay, let's see. He wants us to rest in his loving, capable care and to put our trust in him. The answer given through the Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit it's not self-help, okay? The Bible is not a self-help book, okay? It gives a lot of good advice. You know, we have Proverbs. We have all kinds of wonderful advice in the Bible, but it's not merely self-help, no. It is not self-help. It is not sticking our heads in the sand and pretending nothing is wrong. Um, the Bible's not about that either. Um, I've heard of people who taught things like that. That's silly. If you're sick, you're sick. If something's wrong, is wrong, okay? Jesus never told anybody to deny their circumstances, not once. I've read the four Gospels. He never told anybody to do that, okay? Um, 
But what the Bible is, it's instructions on what to do in the real uncertainties and concerns of life. And here's the steps to living a worry-free life. Present your request to God through prayer. And here's a Greek word. Let's see if I can say it. <laughs> prosuke, prosuke denotes the petitioner's attitude of their mind as being worshipful. When we pray, we are offering worship to the Lord. Okay, We are coming before him in humility. He is almighty God. Who, who spoke the worlds into existence, and yet he cares for us. He hung on a cross, he bled and died, but he cares for us and tells us to pray. He tells us to pray. So we come in worship, prosuke. Then we come with petitions. This is disai, another fun Greek word. So prosuke and disai, and I'm probably not saying them right, but anyway. Desi denotes prayers of expressions of need. Okay, God knows we need things. We are a needy people. We really are. I mean, every day we need something. He knows we're needy, and he wants us to bring those needs before him. With thanksgiving, you know, we always need to be mindful of what God's done for us in the past. In every day, just the little things, the big things, we need to have thanksgiving and I find myself sometimes complaining more than I'm thankful. I don't know if you all struggle with that at times. I try not to do that. I've heard before some moms have put like a jar in the kitchen, a complaining jar, and every time you complain, you gotta put a penny in it or something. Yeah, I've thought of doing that. I don't have my kids anymore. I've thought of doing it for myself sometimes. But um, yes, we need to be thankful people. Even when things are not going our way, we need to be thankful. Um, but give our petitions to the Lord. He knows we have needs. He knows that. Um, and if we do this, relying on the Lord, the result is that God will give us his peace, the peace that passes understanding, which will keep our hearts and our minds centered on Jesus. I mean, there's nothing like God's peace. I, I know many of you have experienced that, you know, when you've lost a loved one or something in those times, you can just tangibly feel God's peace. There, there's just nothing that can compare to that, and God wants to do that for us. Um, and it, it surpasses even understanding, like there's times we've had peace or just God's comfort or something, and like, I don't even know how that's happening. <laughs> it's just the Holy Spirit, it's just God's presence. And the Christian life can only be lived in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we're, we're Pentecostals, you know, we, we love, we lift up the Holy Spirit. He's with us. Even if we don't always feel those warm feelings, he is with us, he's in us, and he will help us. Okay, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there's anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Um, you know, I was thinking about that. One, one of those is whatever is lovely. That sort of seems strange to me in a way. Like, I want to sit and think about whatever's lovely. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a flower person. I like flowers. You know, there's just something. I mean, don't you just love looking at beautiful, fresh flowers? I was driving in, and there's a tuft, those little... Those little uh, yellow, what? Yes, uh, they're just little tufts of them growing wild, and I was just, oh, the spring's coming, and it's so pretty, and it's just lovely, you know. God created those; He created that for our enjoyment. You know, they're beautiful. They most of them, some of them smell really nice, but think on things that are lovely, uh, things that are true, you know, commendable, praiseworthy. Um, there's an expression that says you are what you eat, okay? That, that's pretty true. <laughs> um, it can almost be said, though, that you are what you think. What we think is very important. It will affect how we live, how we talk, how we act, you know, how we think. Um, and, and this is the reason, our, he has this in big bold letters, too, 
our minds seem to be a common target of the devil. I mean, that is the absolute truth. Um, you know, like I was telling someone the other day, like, I don't know if you all ever saw those old Star Trek shows uh, where it says space, the final frontier. I've thought before, no, our mind is the final <laughs> frontier because that's like the thing that's the hardest to tame, the hardest to sanctify. You know, you can, you can behave, like control your behavior and, and, you know, do good deeds, but our thoughts are harder to control. And, um, and the enemy will, uh, he'll try to get us to think on things that aren't true, not true about ourselves, not true about others, not true about God, things that aren't true in life. Um, he thought, tries to get us to think on things that are not honorable, slanderous thoughts of others, um, you know, wild speculation, just you know, inventing all kinds of things in our mind about other people or, oh, that person don't like me or whatever. You know, he'll, he'll just put all those kind of thoughts in our head. Um, he tries to get us to think on what is not upright or just uh, or conformable to God's standards. Um, that sounds like our culture right now, <laughs> for sure. You know, that's constantly people are calling up, down, you know, wrong, right, black, white, whatever, just the opposite of what God says in his word. You know, they want to do the opposite. And, uh, and when I said black, white, I'm not talking about skin color. I'm just talking about, you know, the world twisting everything that God's word said to make it completely opposite of what he means. That's, that's you know, the culture we're in. But that also can happen to Christians at times. Um, and the enemy wants us to think immoral thoughts as well. Um, my phone is over there in my purse. You know, our smartphones, which are dumb phones in some ways. Um, it, it's just the, the awful things you can see on there unintentionally. It, it, it's just astounding. You know, my heart aches for kids and young people with just so much junk and trash just right there on their phones. It's just you know, immorality is just, it's rampant in our society right now, and we have easy access. And the enemy, I mean, he's flooding, he's flooding us with that. Um, he tries, the enemy, I'm still talking about the enemy now, tries to lead our thoughts down paths that are not pleasing, agreeable, amiable, or commendable. Anything negative, anything divisive, there's the enemy whispering that in your ear about yourself, others, and God. And we need to learn, nope, I will not think those thoughts. I have the mind of Christ. I'm going to dwell on what the Bible says, no matter what I feel, no matter what this person said or done to me. I'm following you, Jesus. I'm sticking with you and your word and your thoughts. I'm going to think your thoughts. By God's, God's grace, we can do that. Um, we are all susceptible to stinking thinking. Yep, every one of us. If, if you don't think you are, uh, you'll wake up tomorrow and be susceptible. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, what background you're from. You're susceptible. So what we read and view, what we look at, what, what people we hang around with, you know, there's some people you can't help being around and they're toxic people. But if you purposely go with that group, they're going to rub off on you, okay? That's just how it works. And um, the Bible tells us to gird up the loins of our mind. So with Jesus' help, we should not let our minds detour off the right path of moral excellent, excellence, but we need to be focused on things worthy of praise. And in the old times when the men wore robes, oh, sorry, microphone, the old times when the men wore robes, they had like these sash parts of their robes and um, they would like tie it through the robe and hook it through their belt and it sort of made their robes into like sort of like baggy pants kind of and that's how they were able to run and fight in their battle. And so, you know, gir girding up the loins in our mind, we need to prepare our minds to think the right thoughts by not feeding it with, with just garbage and negativity, and, you know, we need to focus on the Lord. Um, a couple ladies I've been counseling, I told them, have praise music playing in your home. Just turn it on when you get home, have it praying, you know, doesn't have to be blasting. Have it on there. It will, it will help the, uh, the atmosphere of your home. It'll help with your thoughts. You know, you won't be focusing on 
just all the problems, all, you know, that just, you know when you're alone, when you're not at work or with other people and just all those thoughts, like you're laying in bed at night, all those thoughts, just all the worries, all the just not gonna work out and just, you know, believe me, I, I, I struggle with that too, but just praise music will help that. You know, there's some, if you all have YouTube or, or I don't know, different, radio things, there's some where you can get like a whole thing that'll play all night. Just, it'll just be, you know, worship music with healing scriptures and things like that. Um, you know, I could help you find something like that if you're interested. But that is also a way to fight the enemy because God inhabits what? The praises of his people, yes. So we need to focus our minds on the right things. Um, okay, let's see if I can turn this page. There we go. Okay, and then verse 9. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is akin to Philippians, pardon me, 3.16. In any case, we should live up to what other, whatever the truth we have attained. The teachings of Christ and his apostles are not meant to be head knowledge, Okay, in the Great Commission, the Lord tells us to teach disciples to obey everything he's commanded us to do. It's not just head knowledge, it's heart knowledge, and it's doing knowledge. Um, Paul tells the Philippians, all the truths you have learned about God from your personal study, all that he has imparted to them, all that he taught them and the example of what he lived before them, he exhorts them to live it also. And the result, that the God of peace would be with you. So God will help us as we're living for him. It's not what we feel. Sometimes we gotta do what we don't feel. But God will help us as we live that out. And then a lot of times the feelings will follow. You know, I've found that before. Like a lot of times I just don't feel like praying or reading the Bible. But you know, you start doing that and then you just get you know, excited, a scripture will really speak to you, you know, we got to live it. Telling someone about the Lord, you know, I'm not a big time, bold evangelist type, I don't preach on street corners or whatever, but as you begin to just friendship evangelism, you know, somebody's telling you their problems, and you'll say, well, you know, would you mind if I pray with you about that, or I'll tell my church to pray? Almost nobody would turn you down for that, okay? That's just a really good way to be able to share your faith. Um, God wants us to live it, live that life. Okay, um, let's see. We're getting toward the end here. <laughs> um, okay, so be an obedient Christian, and God and his peace will be with us. So we just need, I know you all know these things, but we need reminders. You know, God's word is fresh every time. So um, I guess that's the end here. So praise the Lord. We will. He will finish up. I'm believing by faith he'll be here next Wednesday. He will finish up the rest of the chapter. So we did end on verse 9, if you're following. So anyway, um, oh, that's right. We will have faith walkers. So yeah, we're at the end of the month. So for March, next week, of course, we'll meet in our separate rooms, the men and the ladies, the so men downstairs, ladies upstairs. So we'll finish Philippians the week after that. So anyway, um, worship team, if you feel like coming up, you don't have to, but we're just gonna end in prayer here. Um, I just, if anybody needs special prayer, I invite you to come down. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Uh -huh. Okay. 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 Yes. Mhm. Mm okay. We'll we'll pray for him again, but um, but let's just let's just pray here at the end. If you if you want to come forward, if you want to pray this into your own heart and life, the scripture tonight, I just invite you to do that. If you need to take a little time, if you don't, that's okay too. But let's just pray together. 
praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you, Lord, just for the honor and privilege of gathering in your name, brothers and sisters in Christ, to praise you, to love you, to hear your word being spoken, Lord. Your word never returns void. And Lord, especially help us tonight, Lord, with our thinking, our thought life. Lord, many of us struggle with depressing thoughts, anxious thoughts, worrying. I just pray, Lord, I believe you, you spoke to me to pray before we sang that song, Break the Chains, and I, and I was praying that in my mind, and then Beverly sang that song. That, that's not a coincidence. It's called the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I just pray right now, break those chains of negative thinking. Lord, of worrying. It's so easy to worry. It's the easiest thing in the world. But, Lord, we trust in you. You have our families in your hands, our children, our grandchildren, our health, our finances. And Lord, those who come against us, just negativity, all the junk going on in the world, Lord, help us to focus on you. Whatsoever things are true and lovely, praiseworthy of good report, help us to focus on those things. And Lord, help us to live for you, to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Give us the power and the will and the strength to perform that, Lord, and, and just to practice spiritual disciplines, just to seek you and to share our faith with others. And Lord, we also want to lift up Stephen again to you, Lord. If this surgery is an answer to prayers that his lungs will clear, as I was praying, Lord, that he will just feel, feel a clearing in his lung and be able to breathe better, then, Lord, we pray that this surgery will work. Lord, um, uh, the, his, his sister is worried about uh, him surviving this, Lord. We just put this entire situation in your hands. And, Lord, we just pray that your will would be done, whether through surgery or not through surgery. But, Lord, we just plead your blood over Stephen right now. And we just pray your healing touch upon him right now, Lord Jesus. They are Christians. They're seeking you and crying out to you. And Lord, this is not too difficult for you. This is nothing for you. And so we just speak for clear lungs in the name of Jesus. We just speak this in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray you would bless each and every one who came out tonight. Those who are watching online, Lord, bless them, touch them, draw them closer to you. And Lord, just send revival to our hearts and just bless our church, Lord, and just minister to each and every one. Bless us as we go home the rest of the week until we come together again. We give you all praise, all glory. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, God bless you, saints here tonight and those online. We just bless you. If you don't have a church home, you are welcome to join us at Lighthouse Assembly. We're a loving bunch, and um, we have good things in store. So praise the Lord. God bless you.